With Selection Sunday in just a few days away now, we're going to get into some bubble teams, particularly the ones who are my last four into the NCAA tournament and the first four out of the NCAA tournament. So teams that need to protect their, protect their spot in the tournament and teams that still have a little bit of work to do. We're going to start uh, with Oklahoma, who lost Oklahoma State last night in the Big 12 tournament, ending their regular season. We all know the case with Oklahoma. They've been uh, really hot, one of the best teams in the country early in the season, but lately, particularly in the new year, have really fallen off. They're 18-13 and 13 overall. They're just 0-10 0 0 in road games and neutral site games since the new year started after picking up six Quadrant 1 wins, or uh, as many Quadrant 1 wins as any team in the country uh, prior to that. Have a solid RPI, a solid Ken Palm rating, a solid chunk of schedule, we know the problems with this team, though. They, the resume is really built on their early season wins. Their defense, especially of late, and their shooting, especially of late, has not been up to par. They're really struggling. But because their performance of the last 10 games, last 12 games, is no longer uh, a metric that the tournament selection committee looks at, Oklahoma is still safely in, although we may see them in a first four game in Dayton on Tuesday or Wednesday. Another team that's barely in the field right now is Louisville. Louisville got a win, an important win, over Florida State in their first round matchup uh, in the ACC tournament. That puts them, I think, on the right side of the bubble, though they're still kind of on the bubble of the 20-12 and 12 record. Again, solid RPI, Ken Palm, both top 40. They have four quadrant one wins. They don't have any of the necessarily top-tier wins, but enough to put them on the right side of the bubble with the strong strength of schedule. I think they're in. They're like looking at a first four matchup as well, but... Uh, Dave Padgett's squad, especially with everything that they've experienced and gone through this year with the FBI investigation and then the 2013 national title getting shipped from them, they just want to, I, I think, get in the dance. I think this will be a relief for them, even if they're in the first four, and they'll, we'll see them play a bit more freely in the NCAA tournament if they get there as we project here. Another team that I think is in the NCAA tournament, no matter what, that a lot of other people don't, is Alabama. Alabama's got a very questionable record at 17-14, and 14. Questionable metrics as well, with a 54 rating in the RPI, 53rd in Kempom. But they have as many Quadrant 1 wins as any other team on the bubble, with 5. Uh, very strong schedule with 8. And I think the NCAA Selection Committee, when they did their Top 16 early release way back in February, showed how much weight they're giving these Quadrant 1 wins and big-time wins to programs. How much weight they're giving those over other metrics. And because Alabama has so many of those Quadrant 1 wins despite their current five-game losing streak, I think they'll get in the NCAA tournament no matter what because of those Quadrant 1 wins, although it will probably be in a first-four matchup. They're a very dangerous team who has a lot of talent, but simply aren't playing that well lately and are inconsistent on both sides of the ball, on both sides of the court. I think they're in, but Crimson Tide fans may be sweating it out a little bit on Selection Sunday. Another team in the non-conference, like Oklahoma, who played really, really well and then kind of stumbled in Pac-12 play and now finds himself firmly on the bubble, is Arizona State. They were 12-0 non-conference, had a neutral court win over Xavier, beat Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. They were in, they were a lock, they were number one team in the country, top three team in the country. Then they got into conference play. Lost to Colorado, as you mentioned before. They finished Pac-12 play. 8-11, including that loss in the conference tournament. And this is a very down year for the Pac-12. That's not very good. Their metrics reflect that. 78th strength of schedule, 60, uh, 62nd in the RPI, 44th in Kempom, which is based on their efficiency and lethal and sometimes uh, explosive ability of their offense, but only three quadrant one wins. And again, those, those two wins, really, the, the Xavier and Kansas wins are essentially what makes the resume. And if there's bubble teams behind them that we see in this first four out, or even a little bit behind that, that make a run in, in, their, pack, in their conference tournaments and get major wins that kind of boost their resume to match Arizona State's, or if there's a bid stealer along the way that wins a conference tournament who wasn't going to be in the field in the first place, Arizona State fans are really going to be sweating out here this uh, selection Sunday because, again, only those two wins, those are great wins, but because of their terrible record in conference play, they can't feel comfortable about their chances. We'll bring in a reaction poll here. Do you think Arizona State will make the NCAA tournament? Let us know. Again, a love reaction if you agree, a like reaction if you do not agree. It's a team that has quality wins, as we talked about, but also 
hasn't been very good, again, since the new year. There's a common theme with a lot of these bubble teams, strong non-conference schedules, uh, non-conference performances, and then they really struggle once they got into conference play. So give us your thoughts. Is Arizona State going to make the NCAA tournament? Now we're going to go to the other side of the bubble and talk about some teams that are my first four teams out of the field right now. We're going to start with St. Mary's. Now, a lot of people think St. Mary's is a lock to be in the NCAA tournament, but taking a closer look at the resume, it doesn't exactly uh, scream NCAA tournament team. They have a lofty record at 28-5, and five, good metrics with their RPI and Ken Palm ratings, but their strength of schedule is only 217. They only have two Quadrant 1 wins and three terrible losses to counteract that. They lost to Georgia, lost to BYU, lost to Washington State. And the Georgia-Washington State losses came over Thanksgiving, uh, the Thanksgiving week, feast week, on a neutral court. These, any other mid-major team, if they didn't have the name St. Mary's, we'd be, we wouldn't be talking about them uh, as a lock for the NCAA tournament. We'd be talking about them as, as a bubble team at best. Uh, St. Mary's, I just, they... they would have been out completely if they would have lost to Pepperdine in the first round of the West Coast tournament. But narrowly squ uh, squeaked that went out, then went and lost to BYU in the semifinals uh, of the West Coast Conference tournament. I don't think that they have enough quality wins, given their strength of schedule, to warrant a place in the NCAA tournament right now. Now we go to one of the more interesting cases and more talked about cases of, of the bubble right now in Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame played most of the, conf uh, uh, most of the conference schedule Without Bonzi Colson, was a preseason first-team All-American, one of the best players in the country. He returned for the last week, week and a half of the regular season. He was playing down in the ACC tournament, which many people think makes him a very different team, which I, I agree with. He's certainly one of the better players. But the resume without him was not great at all. They have a, a 64th in the RPI. But they are 28 in Kempom, which helped, but only two quadrant one wins, which is why I think they need to really beat Duke tonight to earn their place in the NCAA tournament. And they have some really, really bad losses, which is why we find them in this bubble conversation right now. Uh, they lost to Georgia Tech in conference play without Bonzi Colson, but they lost at home to Ball State and lost to Indiana on a neutral court, both with Bonzi Colson on the roster with, full healthy, with a full healthy team. That's why they need to beat Duke tonight. There, there's A lot of people will advocate for Notre Dame to be in the NCAA tournament because uh, of the hype that they had with Bonzi Colson, but again, the resume with him uh, was not as great as people give, give them credit for. They won the Maui Invitational Tournament, beat Wichita State on that neutral court in that Maui title game, which certainly helps their resume, but outside of that win, they don't have a lot, even with uh, Colson on, on the team. Now, they can obviously beat Duke tonight. They're in, no questions asked. That's another quality win. They're good. But lose that game, I think Notre Dame fans, you're going to find yourself on the wrong side of the bubble on Selection Sunday. Another team that's really rising and gaining positive momentum right now is Oklahoma State. We just talked about them uh, with beating Oklahoma in the first round of the Big 12 tournament. Their run uh, continues to go there. They've really come on of late. They have six quadrant one wins, which again is, is as many or more than any uh, bubble team, which certainly helps their case. They swept Kansas, which they hadn't done in forever. They had two wins Oklahoma. 51st in Ken Palm, and again, the strong schedule playing in the Big 12, but what really kills them is their incredibly weak non-conference schedule. Their non-conference strength of schedule was ranked 311th out of 351 teams. They didn't pick up any quality wins then, so basically their entire resume is based on what they've done in the Big 12, and they were the 8th best team in the Big 12 during the regular season. They finished 8th and got the 8th seed in the Big 12 tournament, so they have plenty of quality wins but they don't have the depth of quality wins that we see from a lot of these other bubble teams. I think they need to win one more game in the Big 12 tournament, and then they'll have a legitimate case for inclusion in the NCAA tournament. But right now, they're sitting on the outside looking in. And then finally, our, our, our final of the first four teams out, team that is going to find themselves on the wrong side of the bubble yet again is Syracuse. They finished the season in 2013. Would have, I think, clinched a bid had they beat North Carolina last night in the ACC tournament, but... We're unable to get that done. Lost by a significant margin. 41st in the RPI, 55th in Ken Palm. Only three Quadrant 1 wins with some bad losses against Georgia Tech and Wake Forest to add to that. Strong strength of schedule. Strength of schedule ranked 13th in the country. But again, a lack of, of overall top-end wins. And 20 and 13 with a, another just mediocre resume. Another 
mediocre year for Syracuse, and now that their season's done and they don't have any more chances to pick up another quality win, I don't think they'll make the NCAA. I don't think they'll make the tournament again. Uh, second straight year that the Orange will miss out on the big dance. All right, guys, that does it for today's Ralph Report. I am Brian Ralph for Chat Sports. Remember to follow me on Twitter at BRalph33 for all the latest college basketball news and rumors and live updates and analysis from all the games around the country as we get into uh, the, uh, a fun weekend before Selection Sunday. Make sure you tune in to chatsports.com and download the Chat Sports app as well for all the latest college basketball news and rumors on your favorite team. I'm Brian Ralph for the Ralph Report. We'll see you next time.